top water frog fishing. That's what this video is about. Before we get started, if you're new, comment below and say hi. Also, hit that like and subscribe button. Help the channel out. I really appreciate it. But right now, you and I are going to talk all about the who, what, where, when, and why of topwater frogs. So if you're like me, frog fishing is a love and hate relationship. At times it's some of the most fun fishing you can have, and then at other times it's heartbreaking. Today we're going to talk about a few things. To start off with, we're going to talk about the type of frogs. Then we're going to talk about when you should use those frogs in certain circumstances or certain situations. And then last, I'm going to try to give you some helpful hints that maybe you already know, but might help you catch more fish. So let's start it off by talking all about topwater frogs. If you're like me, you have a lot of frogs, and I mean a lot of frogs. They are a great way to catch giant bass and catch all types of bass. but you know at times frog fishing is very tough uh, you need to know you need to use the right type of frog for the right circumstance so to start off we're gonna talk about what I think there are three or four types of frogs out there to start off the most important thing is having a really collapsible frog now there's gonna be ones that are better than others but when the frog but when the bass bites down on it the frog needs to collapse and expose the hooks. There's certain frogs that are more collapsible than others. There's some that don't collapse very well at all in my opinion. This is a harder plastic frog. Not that this isn't the, the worst out there, but there's a lot of frogs that are not real good. You want it to be soft. You want it to collapse. I think there's three or four out there that just do the job really well. You have your scum frogs that are insanely collapsible and you have others like your live targets and this is the Z-Man frog that are very soft. <clears throat> to start off with, that's the most important thing you have with that you, you're going to deal with. That frog needs to collapse as soon as it gets bit. Now there's certain frogs that have the hooks kind of hidden. You'll notice that, that's pretty, that's pretty hidden, that Z-Man one. There's other ones that are, are soft, but you can see those hooks are exposed up. That's a major thing that we're gonna talk about. That's a major thing we're gonna talk about. But I think there's three or four types of frogs, hollow body frogs that you need to, you need to have in your, in your tackle bag at all times. To start off with, you want one that is a, that's gonna skate over, over the water. This Z-Man one does real well, it has that keel. What this does is it allows the bait to go side to side and to bounce. If you've ever watched a frog jump from the grass into the water, it jumps and it, as it explodes, it does this. It goes top to bottom or up to down. And that's extremely important. So a walking frog is your first frog. Next, you'll have your popping frogs. This one really isn't a popping frog, but this one is a popping frog that has that popper face. Also, again, very collapsible. This is a, a bait that you use. There's, you're gonna use these baits at different times, so, but right now we're just talking about the types of baits. From there, you have your flapper, kicker, tail, leg frogs that have a bubble trail uh, that you need to have and from there I think the last ones that you need to have that are are your bodied frogs like your I think this is a chase baits one your ones that have again kicker tails this is a live target having those frogs in your arsenal of tackle and knowing when to use them 
is extremely important and that's what we're going to talk about next let me start by saying knowing the type of frog and the situation that you're using is very important so behind me i have a lot of grass on top of the water i don't want to use a frog that has the hooks exposed slightly upward while the scum frog this scum frog is an amazing amazing frog i think this is the bobby's perfect frog from from scum frog this these hooks are exposed up this is while this is a great bait to use in open water and stuff this is not where i would use this here because there's grass on top of the water you will find yourself catching grass there what you want is you want a frog that has the hooks kind of not dug in but are are not exposed like that i don't even know where it is now the hell did i put it one minute 37 seconds later <clears throat> like this one so this is the molex sneaky frog but if you notice those points of the hooks are pointed downwards so when i'm in grass or thick mats that are on top of the water i want to use a popping or not a popping frog a walking frog that can walk and skip over it but also not catch any grass your frogs that have the hooks slightly exposed or upward will tend to catch a little bit of grass and that doesn't help you also when i'm going through lily pads and stuff like that i don't catch the edge of the lily pad with a, a hook that's slightly buried while this while the the scum frog is just unbelievably collapsible those hooks that are exposed a little bit up have a tendency to catch mats and grass so like here <clears throat> while i would love to use this bobby's perfect frog or whatever this one is from scum frog this isn't the type of frog i want to use here i don't mind it in open water or on edges but if i have a grass or something on top of on top of the water this isn't the way to go i want to use something that's a little bit more buried or the hook a little bit more buried so you're popping frogs like this vega which has the hooks a little bit more exposed upwards are great <clears throat> in open water this is a great time to make a bombing cast and work the edges of the grass and pop it and pause it that's where the popping frog is highly successful you want to cast work it pop it and stop it let it sit that bass is going to come up from behind and grab it and and eat it and it's a it's a great bait to just work edges but not in super heavy cover and the last type of frog your kicker tail this could be a little willow blade or colorado blade whatever it is could be here to add a little flash but this is great in open water too that bubble trail that that bait will leave will attract the fish also that that willow blade or whatever kind of blade is on the back will also attract the fish too because there's a little bit of a flash going on so your open water fishing this is a great bait to use it's something that has a kicker tail or a thumper tail or really I guess we can call them bumper legs because that's what they are so there is a fourth style of frog and that is one that isn't a hollow body bait this is from doomsday tackle i think this is a, a a full plastic frog now i don't really recommend these kind of frogs or the frogs like this one that are that are hard this is a i don't even know what kind of frog this has a great walking action or you know even though it's melted uh, but these aren't the type of frogs I think that you should be out there using I think they're tougher to use I think that while you get some more strikes that one right there with the treble hooks on the bottom is just gonna snag stuff the problem with these kind of frogs is they don't collapse so if the, the hook doesn't come exposed you've lost the fish so while they're probably good and probably still catch fish I think that your hollow body frogs that collapse easy and are expose the hooks are the type of frogs that you should be using so we've talked about the who and the what and the where to use each one and i think now is the good time to talk about some extra tips that you should use to catch more bass while topwater bass fishing and we're going to start off by talking about the skirt 
in most cases you get these giant skirts some of them are even longer like this z-man skirt is outrageous long i would suggest that you take the skirt move it to the front and cut off anything that is longer than the bait <clears throat> you're going to find yourself getting a lot of short strikes on these tails that are super long so trim them down and that's going to help you catch more fish i think this is just something that most anglers know that love topwater bass fishing if you you we we've talked about hooks that are exposed a little bit up and then hooks that are exposed a little bit more down knowing what kind of bait you have is extremely important on when you set the hook so your exposed hooks up you don't really need to worry about the three second rule with frogs if you don't know what the three second rule is in most cases they tell you to wait three seconds or wait till you feel the bite before you set the hook now one of the common mistakes most anglers make is they see the bite and they set the hook that's not what you want to do when frog fishing you want to feel the bite as you, and then set the hook but you'll get a better hook up ratio with the hooks that are exposed up because you'll see it and you can set the hook a little bit faster but again you really want to feel the bite before you set the hook in all circumstances but the exposed hook up do help your hook up ratio a little bit better my last tip is cast into the thickest stuff you can cast into have the right frog on and cast into the bank or cast into the grass if you've ever watched a frog come off a bank into the water they will jump from the grass line and clear all that grass and land on the water now a bass is going to sit there and wait to ambush that that frog so as you make your first cast or your last cast or whatever cast you're doing cast into the shoreline and pop it over that grass they're waiting for that bat that frog to that bass is waiting to ambush that frog so if you see the grass out there i will cast directly into it and then pop it off of it and let that bass land on the water and let it sit for a second and then i'm going to start working it that's what bass are looking for that's what frogs do knowing what they do and knowing knowing what a bass is about to do will help you catch more fish bass are just sitting on that edge or that in this case right now there's they're sitting on the shadow line so know your circumstances know your surroundings before you make that first cast but cast into that bank and then work it over i know you'll catch more fish because of that so when i fish mats i'm using a 40 pound power pro when i'm fishing here or other places where i like to fish a frog i'm fishing 10 pound 12 pound power pro i like the lighter line but if i'm thick fishing thick cover size up your line man you're going to find that when you get that bite and you set that hook and that bass gets gets going it's going directly into the thickest crap it can find it's going to hook yourself around a lily pad or around a big clump of grass and you need to be able to rip that thing out of there without losing the fish so generally i'm using my bait caster with 40 pound power pro but there's a lot of times where i know this water and i know there isn't a ton of grass behind me that i know that i can get the fish out with 10 or 12 but but line it up if you have any doubt make it heavier because the last thing you want to do is lose the lure lose the fish and be frustrated with frog fishing because this can be very frustrating a lot of the time this isn't something that you just come out and do and you're successful at you know i call this the frog pond because as i walk from here all the way around frogs will jump over my feet to get into the water as i spook them and i talked about that earlier that's what happens with a frog you spook them they jump in the water and those bass are waiting there to ambush them i hope this helps you thanks for hitting that like and subscribe button it is 98 degrees out right now and i'm burning up but i wanted to make this video and i hope it helps you catch more fish remember take a kid fishing get your fish on 
Thank you for everything. Cheers. Hit like and subscribe. Take your um kids fishing. Pfft.